Hello, it's me, Robin, with Simple Food, Simple Life. Look what I've got here. It's a jar of russet potatoes that I canned in 2022. So, I'm going to do something with these potatoes today, and I've never done this before, but hey, I'm going to give it a try. We'll see what happens, and I'll bring you along with me. I really don't even know what to call it, but that's okay. If you hear something in the background, that's my microwave. I am microwaving some bacon for this dish. Okay, shall we open this? Oh, that was sealed up nicely. Hmm, let's give it a smell. You always have to look at them. You always have to smell them. The potatoes will get dark. It smells good to me. All right. I'm going to pour these in the pan. Canning water and all. I'm going to I'm going to cook these. They're already cooked, but I'm going to bring them to a nice boil and make sure they're heated through. Okay, potatoes are hot through. Got some butter here. And I have a new mixer, yay! <laughs> My son and daughter-in-law were kind enough to get me this for Christmas came with all these nice attachments. This is the nicest mixer I have ever had, and I've only ever had a hand mixer. But this is absolutely the nicest mixer I have ever had. It is a Hamilton Beach. Isn't it gorgeous? I was so excited and happy. Thank you, Donnie and Sharon, for giving your mama this mixer. It's awesome. All right. Now we're going to mash those potatoes. I like to put the butter in first. I've got a half a stick of butter. I always put my butter in first and incorporate that first. Okay. I've got the potatoes whipped up. Normally I mash my potatoes with a potato masher. But I decided to whip them. So I've got a package of Velveeta cheese sauce, which comes from Dollar General. This actually costs one dollar. I'm going to use half of this in the potatoes. I will use the other half for something else later on in the week. I did salt and pepper the potatoes, which is great. Those um, Velveeta cheese sauce packets also come with uh, jalapenos. You can make your a quick nacho cheese sauce out of that if you like. It's awesome. All right, I got that mixed up as much as I want to at this time. Here, I have two slices of bacon, which I'm going to crunch up. <clears throat> I could chop them and everything, but I don't know why I do that. This works just as good. Gives it a rustic look. So, have you guessed what I'm trying to do here? I'm trying to make a, give it like a, a like a twice baked. My daughter-in-law Jen makes these twice baked potatoes that are oh, they're so awesome. They are, I mean, they're delicious. 
I've tried making twice baked before and mine never turn out like that, but hers are delicious. Okay, let's mix this up. I don't know, I think that looks pretty good. Now wait a minute here before I finish mixing them. I'm going to put in a little bit of dehydrated minced onion. And, I don't know, that looks so good that I, I absolutely just, I want to um, take a big bite right now. But, it's early in the, it's earlier in the morning, it's not time for me to eat yet, so. That was garlic powder. And, how about a little parsley, because we're going to make it look pretty. Oh my gosh, this looks so good, I'm excited. I am excited. Well, there we go. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to let it cool off a bit. And I'm going to go to the next step. I don't know. That looks spectacular. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, here I've got an 8-ounce hamburger patty. <coughs> and I am <coughs> just browning it up. This was partially cooked. And I'm finishing it up. the skillet. I'm going to put some garlic on here. Some dried minced onion. These were, this, this, it was salted already, so I'm going to do some pepper. I'm going to put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce on here. The Worcestershire sauce brings a nice flavor and it also brings on a good color as well. Right here I've got some beef broth. There's some bouillon in there along with a cup of water. And I've kept the fat with the broth because fat adds nice flavor. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Alrighty, now I've got a cornstarch slurry. That gets added. Turn it down. Just going to thicken this up a little bit. Now I've got a can of mixed vegetables and I'm going to add it liquid and all. Turn the heat back up on that.
That looks tasty. It tastes tasty. Got another can of mixed vegetables. These are drained. Now all these items I'm putting in this came from my pantry or freezer. That looks tasty. <laughs> I think it looks good. Now, if, you, if we stopped right here, we would have a stew. Give it a little taste for seasoning. It needs more salt. Needs more pepper. Needs more garlic. A little more onion. I think we're going to do a little more Worcestershire. That looks really good. I've got a pie plate here and I have brushed the pie plate with the bacon grease from the bacon I cooked. So it's got lots of flavor in the bacon grease, why waste it? Okay, the filling is in the, the pie plate. In case you haven't guessed, I'm trying to make a cottage pie. I've never made a cottage pie before. I know, hard to believe, right? But here it is. I want you to notice that the that the ground beef is in large chunks, and I did that on purpose because I really like the way that looks. It gives it a beefy look, even though there's really only about eight ounces of ground beef in the dish. And now let's take our potatoes that have cooled off and we're gonna I'm just gonna use my handy dandy ice cream scoop and I'm just gonna just put it around the the filling all right let's see if we can get this spread out a little bit Probably be easier if the potatoes were fluffier, but they're not, so that's fine. I think it's still going to be good. I uh, have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I'm flying blind here, so. Be gentle with me. <laughs> You know, shepherd's pie and cottage pie, I don't know, it never really looks great. Put a little bit of um, parsley on the top. Now, just before this is done, I'm going to take the other two slices of bacon and I'm going to crumble them up just shortly before I think that it's done. All right, it's going to go in the oven until it's done. Well, I think until it's nice and bubbly. Okie doke. I remembered that I had some cheddar cheese, a little piece left, so I'm going to put that on top. And then this is going to go back in the oven for I don't know what. Maybe 10 more minutes or until the cheese is melted.
I did put this on a baking sheet because you never know, it might bubble over. I don't want a big mess to clean up. And I've got this bacon here. I'm going to put that on top. This smells really good. It smells uh, kind of um, like bacon. It smells cheesy. It smells, um, I don't know, beefy. It's really awesome. So, I don't know. I just want to try it. I wanted to make sure I had plenty of gravy. Now, I didn't expect this to look like if I would have used fresh potatoes, you know, or fluffy mashed potatoes or instant potatoes or whatever. No, I just wanted it to look like whatever it was going to look like. Plus, the cheese is in the potatoes, and that's going to make it look darker as well. Okay, back in the oven, about 10 minutes. Okay. Full disclosure, I put it in the oven, and then I thought, you know what, I think it's cooked enough. I'm just going to put it on broil. So I put it on high broil, and this is what it is. What do you think? <laughs> I'm telling you, it smells awesome. It looks good. I'm going to let this cool down before I taste it, because I don't want to, you know destroy my taste buds forever <laughs> so what do you think let me know in the comments below and listen I'm 73 years old if I can um, make something new that I've never made before I think you guys can too so you know give it a try make it your own and see what happens put it in the comments below and let me know what you think okay all right um, when this is uh, cooled off enough, I will come back and give it a taste, and we'll see what that's like. I think it's going to be good. It's about time for me to eat my first meal of the day anyway, so it works out perfectly. All right, we'll be back. All right, this has been cooling about 20 minutes, so I think it's cool enough that I can taste it. Um, now, just so you know, I had it... Um, actually in the oven for 35 minutes then I took it out I put the cheese on and the bacon and then I put it under the broiler just until the cheese was melted and everything was sizzling on the top so that's really how long it took so let's see what we got here I should put this in a bowl but I thought about putting some mushrooms in this. That would have been good too. All right, let's see. What do you think? It, it actually looks pretty good. I'm excited to try it. Trying to get a little bit of everything here. It's still really hot. Mmm. It smells really nice. Mmm. Mmm. I'll tell you what. It's got that um kind of that smoky bacon flavor along with the the ground beef and the cheese honestly it kind of reminds me of when you bite into a bacon cheeseburger I like bacon cheeseburgers also you know when you have a bacon cheeseburger with a little onion and pickle and you can the the Worcestershire sauce comes through the vegetables are good the gravy the gravy is really kind of perfect 
I have to say it is. I'm very happy. Mmm. 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 Good. I'm very proud of myself because I ventured out. I tried something new. It tastes absolutely awesome. It's so wholesome, so comforting, so good. Um, it's really good. And then it kind of makes my mind, um, you know, spin around and think, okay, what else could you do with these simple ingredients? Maybe instead of potatoes, put biscuits on top. Mm-hmm. Hmm. The mashed potatoes with the cheese just sort of has sunk in and blended in and even made the the gravy even thicker. All with pantry ingredients. I'm so happy. So happy. Listen, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me on this. I love you guys. You know I do. As always, you know that little is much when God is in it. Mm. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. I love you guys. You know I do. That's it for me today. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.